Greetings everyone, this is David. Today's video is going to be about the abortion debates and when life begins according to various different biologists from different academic institutions. When it comes to debates on abortion, uh, usually the question of when life begins becomes sidetracked, it becomes completely ignored, no one even talks about it. And, you know, for example, most pro-choicers on the ground believe that a fetus, uh, an embryo, etc., they're not a living being, they're just clump of cells, they don't have life, they can't be characterized as having life, etc. In this study by Stephen Andrew Jacobs, he has asked more than 5,000 biologists on the question of whether life begins at conception, and 95% of all biologists affirm the biological view that a human's life begins at fertilization, that is conception. And various different uh, biologists were polled, right? Those who were pro-choice, those who were pro-life, those from different political beliefs, they were all polled. And even those who are pro-choice, very pro-choice, in fact, the majority of them agree that life does begin at conception. The implication of this is incredibly clear. Uh, if human life begins at conception and, you know, this and whatever, you know, develops is aborted, then what has happened is murder. This will be considered as a mur murder because the fetus is cons will be considered to be a human living being. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, most pro-abortionists are willing to admit that the fetus is a living being and they still advocate for abortion. For example, Peter Singer um, goes as far as to say that, you know, even infanticide is <laughs> acceptable. Uh, he says, human babies are not born self-aware or capable of grasping that they exist over time. They are not persons, but animals are self-aware, and therefore the life of a newborn is of less value than the life of, uh, you know, I'm not going to finish that sentence. You get the point, right? And this kind of gets into a, a different kind of a question. Can we even biologically define what life is? I think there is a fundamental problem with arguments like Peter's, for example, again, uh, he says human babies are not born self-aware, right? So he kind of attributes self-awareness to, you know, person, you know, personhood. Well, what if we questioned whether Peter himself was self-aware, right? How is he going to prove that he is self-aware? I mean, he can't use himself. That will be that will be circular, right? That's the very thing that is in question. So he will have to appeal to something outside of himself, but there's really nothing to appeal to in order to answer the question. It's the same kind of dilemma. So does that mean that we can abort this, you know, person as well? Well, I think the problem with uh, these kinds of questions is that really ultimately questions about life, you know, of course they can be philosophical. Of course, I think it's fundamentally philosophical, but it really is fundamentally theological. It fundamentally is a question that can be answered uh, in, a, in a religious manner. It just so happens in this discussion that th that science and Bible pretty much is in very strong agreement. Not that it's always in disagreement or anything like that. It's just that in, on this topic, um, the science, the science, right? As we as we stated here, you know, the biologists and scripture here are both in agreement that life does begin at conception. And I think once you understand that this is the center of the debate, it becomes very clear why one should be pro-life. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.